the body had after three weeks no sign of decay no mold no drying no odor nothing it is unparalleled there is no one else and nothing else it doesn't help you if you watched a lot of television it will not make your corpse not decay if you earned a lot of money it will not make your corpse not decay but if you practice as Yogananda practice and live such a pure moral life then such things can happen. We'll look a little bit from the perspective or from the tradition of yoga. There is numerous, numerous cases of uh, miraculous forms of death that uh, happened uh, through yoga. And uh, one memorable one is the death of Kabir. Kabir was a great saint uh, some centuries ago who had disciples, both Hindus and Muslim. It was the time where, well, it's still today, where in India, as you know, there is a lot of Muslims and a lot of Hindus, and often there is a religious conflict between them. But he was such a great master that he uh, embraced both tradition and was considered both by Hindus and by Muslims as a great saint. He wrote a tremendous poetry. I mean, if you want to read, it's like a nectar for the heart. His poems, they really awaken a wonderful sweetness. And as he died, like in Milarepa's case, the disciples had a fight. What would they do with the relics? The Hindus, maybe we burn him. The Muslims, no, should bury. It's a sin to do this. It's a sin to do the opposite. And as they argue, somebody feels inspired, he's carried in a coffin, somebody feels inspired to open the coffin at a certain moment, and in the coffin there are, there's two versions of the story, one is that there are two roses, and then the Muslims bury one rose, and the Hindus burn the other rose, and another one that there is a bouquet of his favorite flowers, and in this way they were all uh, so amazed they could fight no more. Coming to the 21st century, why not? Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, at the age uh, over 90, as he was dying, one day before he died, he made all the arrangements. He gave a very detailed explanation of how everything should be after he leaves. He arranged all the other positions. He signed out all the things that he owned. He gave this to this and this to that, and this will be in charge of that. He finished everything, 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 everything entered meditation the next day and left his body very elegantly, as elegant as he lived. And then an extraordinary story from the 20th century is of the most beloved saint Paramahamsa Yogananda, who was indeed a model human being and one of the most extraordinary figures of the last uh, century, of the last hundred years. He was fortunate to meet his guru, Sri Yukteswar, and uh, receive initiation in the ancient Kriya Yoga system, and at a very young age already went to the United States. Maybe to tell one story of his, um, some of his paranormal abilities, one of his disciples, Ranchi, died. And before dying, Yogananda was there and he told him, Guruji, please, when I reincarnate, find me and bring me on the spiritual path. Please, please, please. And Yogananda said, if God will help me, I will do so. And then after he promised, he was like, oh my God, how will I find him now? But a promise is a promise, especially when it comes from such a saint. So he walked around with his arms up and used all sorts of means for six months until... He had the intuition, there he is. So he went and found a woman pregnant and told the woman, your son will be born like this. He will have a forehead like this and he will have signs like that and he will be extremely spiritual. You let him know that I searched for him and that he should contact me when he's a little older and I will bring him on the spiritual path. And indeed, the child was born with that particular dip in the forehead and with all sorts of signs, which also his previous incarnation had. The child was called Kashi. 
When he was a teenager, he wrote a letter to Yogananda, who by then was in the United States. And Yogananda, surprisingly, didn't take him on his own path, but sent him to another master in the Himalaya. And so Kashi, the incarnation of Ranchi, could continue his spiritual path as a renunciant in the Himalayas. Yogananda arrived to the United States 1920, and uh, after some visits from Vivekananda and other yogis, people heard of yoga, but there was no master living in the United States uh, before Yogananda. So he is the first real yoga master established there. 30 years that he's there, he's initiating 100,000 people. He meets the president, writes a biography. His biography becomes extremely uh, famous and wonderful and is the gateway for so many people to find the spiritual path. People like George Harrison and Steve Jobs considered it their Bible. They would give it to everyone on Steve Jobs' funeral. Everybody's uh, received this book. It's a good moment. The funeral people are more contemplative. And he himself, when he died, he said, Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And died. <laughs> yeah? He had a certain spiritual opening through, uh, to a good degree, through Yogananda. Yogananda himself said that he would like to die speaking of India. That's how he wants to die. And a few hours or a few days before he died, he was in perfect state of health, absolutely no problem. But he started arranging what would happen after and he told his main uh, disciples, Kriyananda and uh, all the others, what to do. And uh, Dayamata and all the others. And then he was invited to give a speech in front of the Indian uh, senator who reached uh, the United States. This was just after India was formed. 7th of March 1952 and he was giving the speech and he was saying the following where Ganges, woods, Himalayan caves and men dream God I am hollowed my body touched that sod or that ground I am hollowed my body touched that ground he says that his eyes turn up he meditates for a moment and the body collapses. And that was the end. The doctor said the heart attack. The body is carried to the cemetery there uh, in Los Angeles. And his cousin needs to arrive from India. And it takes him several weeks. So the coffin stays open. They don't close the coffin. Three weeks the body lies there. And the head of the cemetery there, Mr. Harry Rowe, says the following. The body had, after three weeks, no sign of decay, no mold, no drying, no odor, nothing. It looked completely fresh, like he was alive now. And he said in all his years, and he has seen some dead people, and he's seen some dead people that stay there in a coffin, it is unparalleled. There is no one else and nothing else. It doesn't help you if you watched a lot of television. It will not make your corpse not decay. If you earned a lot of money, it will not make your corpse not decay. But if you practice as Yogananda practice and live such a pure moral life, then such things can happen. And after three weeks, the cousins came. They said goodbye. The coffin was sealed and who knows, maybe he's still like this now. When we come and we see this case and we see Milarepa's case and we will see many other cases, it is difficult not to conclude that indeed we, as we are, have a capability of influencing our death. And this kind of childish, irresponsible attitude in which we only take care of life and we ignore the responsibility that we have over death is covered with this uh, very superficial, very unexplored skepticism. People get skeptic that anything can be done about death. No, read. Now we will bring here 
in a moment, 250 uncorrupt saints like Yogananda in the Christian tradition. So many examples from so many different traditions. And basically, this skepticism is covering up a laziness, a passivity, a flat attitude, which doesn't embrace death courageously, which doesn't embrace death face to face. And this, the purpose of this lecture so far and what's yet to come is to remove that skepticism and therefore to bring responsibility and to say, okay, it's my, my death is my business and I can influence it and these are the proofs that such things can be done. And we will move from the yogic tradition to the Christian tradition. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on spirituality, Tantra and more. And if you want to sign up for our online classes or for our retreats, you can see our website on the description below.